This is the Next Generation Space Telescope. It is going to be put in a place in space that stays in the same position relative to the Earth. We call this the L2 Lagrange point. But what does that even mean? So here's the Sun with the Earth orbiting. The Earth takes a time of one year to make one complete orbit. And you could think of this in terms of the angular velocity as two pi radians in one year. And the next generation space telescopes can be further away, a distance of 1.5 times 10 to the ninth meters. But we want it to also have a period of one year. That's not so easy to do, and I will tell you why. First, we need to think about centripetal acceleration. So as this ball moves around in a circle, it accelerates. At this position, it's moving with a velocity in this direction. A short time interval later, it's moving in this direction. Since acceleration is defined as the change in velocity per unit time, then it is accelerating, even if it's a constant speed. You can determine the magnitude of this acceleration as v squared over r, where r is the radius of the circle. You could also write this in terms of angular velocity as omega squared times r. That's important. The next big thing is gravity. Gravity is an interaction between objects that have mass. So here is the Sun and the Earth, separated by distance r. There is an attractive gravitational force that depends on the product of their masses divided by the square of the distance between them, and g is some gravitational constant. So if you look at the Earth moving in a circular orbit of radius r, there is a gravitational force pulling it towards the Sun. This gravitational force is equal to the mass times acceleration, according to Newton's second law. So if you put those two things together for centripetal acceleration and gravity, you can solve for the angular velocity of the circular orbit Earth, and you get this, g m s over r cubed. Now what about the Next Generation Space Telescope? It's here, a distance of r plus h away. If you use that orbital distance and you ignored everything else, it'd have a smaller gravitational force and a different a centripetal acceleration. It would have an angular velocity of that has a denominator bigger than r, so it would have a slower angular velocity. It would not stay in the same position relative to the Earth. So here's how we fix that. There's actually two forces acting on the space telescope. There's the gravitational force from the Earth and a gravitational force from the Sun. Those two together make the object accelerate. If you put the sum of these two forces and set this equal to the acceleration, which you want the angular velocity to be the same as the Earth with a different distance, you get this very complicated equation to solve. But if you solve for h, you will determine the location of the L2 Lagrange point. And this is what it would look like. So here's the Earth, the cyan one moving around. The yellow is the gravitational arrow. The, uh, the gray dot is the space station, the space telescope. It has two forces acting on it so that it moves with the same angular velocity. But wait, there's more. So here is the L2 Lagrange point. There's another one over here, L1. L1 also moves with the same angular velocity as the Earth, but at a smaller radius. In this case, the sun pulls one way and the Earth pulls the other way to make the angular velocity the same. But wait, there's another one. There's L3, which is on the other side of the sun. So in this case, the Earth and the sun both pull in the same direction, although the Earth pulls very, very little because it's very small away, very far away. There's two more. There's L4 and L5, which are near the same orbit as the Earth, but ahead and behind of it. Those two are very stable places, and actually that's where you can collect asteroids. So that's what you need to know about Lagrange points.